deep in the heart of Houston, Texas, it's the Best of the Outdoors podcast, brought to you by your host, Dustin Von Warnke. I'm joined here by Cal Gonzalez, our saltwater editor, and Chester Moore, our editor-in-chief. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the outdoor world. <laughs> it's good to be here. It's a record time. They've actually had me in Houston three days in a row, so that's kind of unheard of. Yeah, that's crazy. So you yeah. were here... I do limited appearances, you know what I'm saying? Oh, right, right, right. You were here signing books, and... Um, <laughs> And we sold out of your books at one point. And yes. Yeah. So we're back. We sold out of all the Chester books, and there's a bunch of other books from Pat Murray and Doug Pike and everyone there and Greg Burlocker. And they're back supplied. So um, by the time you hear this, that'll be over with. You can go to fishgame.com and store and check the books yep. out. So we've got to yep. give a plug for that, of course. For yeah, sure. There's a lot of great books. We have a lot of great literature in the magazine and from the magazine publishers. You know, and that's true. And what's, what's a book about at the end of the day? Most of the time, there's some kind of a story whether it's how to do something or why we got started. And that's really been part of the conversation here at the show with people coming up to me saying, hey, Chester, man. And they want to tell me about their first flounder right. or their biggest yeah. flounder. And I was thinking maybe it'd be kind of cool to just start off talking about the fish that made us want to fish. That's a great idea, you know, because you look around here and you look at all these people who are here. They're walking the aisles. They're stopping at the booths. And they all share one common thread, and that's that they all love to fish. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a unique thread, and there is total diversity here. Um, and it's really interesting to me because I see the demographic has shifted a lot. It's a lot different looking bunch of people than you would see even a right. decade ago. That's exactly right. So it's definitely a shifting, um, forward-moving industry. But um, just, you know, thinking about fish that made us want to fish, I mean... I could go on for two hours about that deal. I know you could. But for Doug, I want to ask, this is his podcast, but I want to ask him, because podcasters are the worst about asking themselves questions. True. Right? I, I'm mm-hmm. pretty good on this show, I think. I'm going to grill you. Yeah, I'm going to grill you. you gotta, you got to answer all the questions. Because, yeah, okay. That's Name? Uh, Dustin Vaughn Warnke. How do you spell Vaughn? V-A-U-G-H-N. We don't care what, it doesn't okay, matter. Right. matter what your name is anyway. All right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, you didn't you get me and Cal got that one. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but that's a rock it's thing. That's a rock yeah. thing. But um, nah. So you know, I know that you're not as hardcore a fisherman as we are, but you love the fish. I do. Yeah. So what was kind of the, the fish that got you attracted to fishing? Was there a, a time or something you saw in a magazine or anything like that? I got hooked on my dad's bass fishing. Okay. Oh yeah. He would take he was a semi professional. He would run like the, the the Home Depot and McDonald's circuit and the big names back okay. then in the nineties in, in South South Central Texas, San Antonio down south the Falcon and your uh, your your uh, Amstead and those kind yeah. of lakes. And one of the best stories that I have is when I was learning to side cast with the uh, S I B E side. Um, yeah. and I had this mouse that had two prong hook on it and I hit him That's, right in the you back. You can't do that. I, I you can't yeah. hook a mouse. No, 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 no. It's, that's it was unet- an artificial that's mouse. That's unethical, you, you're Dustin. You're going to have the PETA people calling us, you know? What have I done? Uh, <laughs> no, it's a plastic it was a mouse lure. They do it in Mongolia, by the way, oh, for right, Pike. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Pike and Timon. <laughs> Timon, those big old trout. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen and PETA, please do not write us to complain about us using mice it for bait. It was an artificial mouse. It was an artificial yeah. mouse. That's where I was going with I it. I just want to be figured, clear. I'm I an editor. Most i got to be clear. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. figure most people would have figured that out. Um, but anyway, it caught him right in the back. It looked like a snake bite. It was one of the best fishing stories. <laughs> he was not laughing at the time, but he still tells that story today. I mean, bluegill fishing with my dad on Lake Dunlap, where I grew up. Yeah. Um, I mean, just those... Our formative memory memories that made it into the fisherman that I am today. I don't fish as much as, as you guys do, but I do definitely. That was my first love before I got into hunting. Yeah, I got you. So your first favorite fishing memory is hooking your dad? No, no that's love. <laughs> that's, that's love. Deep, Why did I know that Chester was going to go there next? Well, I mean, yeah. come on, you brought it up. I'm a journalist. Yeah. Yeah. To, no, to but, use a live mouse to hook your dad. <laughs> oh, no, you know, no, I, that's no, just okay. Oh, wow. That's not right. Golly, oh, man, maybe oh, he is no. more hard. Did you sharpen <laughs> its little claws? <laughs> Did he use his teeth? <laughs> so to our listeners, we want to start doing these podcasts with the three of us on the regular. Right? If you like that, email us or fishgame.com. Tell us that's a good idea. If you don't like that, we're still going to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. <laughs> we'll do it anyway. Because, you, Ladies and gentlemen, you can't keep these alligators down. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say that earlier? This yes, I did. That's, oh, that's the saying of the day. But um, 
and on all honesty, that's that's cool that your dad was fishing the tournaments at yes. our pro level, and it kind of inspired you to go out there and fish. Do you remember what your first fish was? The very first fish? Uh, it was a bluegill, a bluegill? That I okay. did, and it was right around when I was like five years old. Caught I think on the, the first of fit. No, it was not caught on the mouth. <laughs> Uh, it would have had to be a piece of a mouth because that small. No, I'm not gonna <laughs> or a really big bluegill. Go yeah. yeah, a really big bluegill. But no, it was uh, it was a bluegill. And then when I was two years old, my dad still tells the story. I caught a minnow in a bucket, and that was my first fish. He always tells that story. Oh, that's so. good. That's pretty anyway, cool. Yeah, that's so, good. Man. Anyway, so, yeah, that's kind of cool. what, what, what a great what a great way to start off. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, for yep. sure. So, what about you guys? Well, you oh, with me now? Okay, well, um, the headliner's got to go on last. You're the <laughs> yeah, oh, guy. of course, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> We're live, ladies and gentlemen. We yes, are, we are baby. Um, anyway, um, well, my first fish, um, of all things, again, it was a bluegill. Yeah. Caught on a piece of um, of um, sausage. Okay. Um, and what happened was that we were going to go visit my aunt. She lived in Brownsville, and she lived in a um, of an apartment complex that was right next to a resaca. Mm-hmm. And um, we had been at Monkey, Monkey Ward the night before, and on a whim, I had bought a box of hooks just because they were there. And um, the next day, my dad tied a piece of line onto, um, onto a paint stirring paddle, uh-huh. and he tied the hook onto it, and he gave me a handful of, um, of sausage pieces, and he said, go down to the sock and see what's there. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, what, what, why not? I, I didn't know any better. I was six years old at the time. Five years old here, actually. And I uh, went down there, I put a hook on, dropped it down, and I mean, almost immediately, this, a, a bluegill grabbed it, <laughs> and I pulled out a fish. And I was, uh, holy smokes, I caught a fish. I ran all the way back to the apartment. I showed it to my dad, look, I caught a fish. He goes, holy smokes, you caught a fish. I went, yeah. <laughs> and then he asked the question, he asked me the same question 15 years later when he had me catch an armadillo by the tail. Um, <laughs> What are you going to do with it? Well, I don't know. You told me to go see what's out there. This is what's out there. We'll go put it back. Well, can you take it off the hook? He goes, you caught it. <laughs> so he, I had to figure out how to take it off the hook. I took it back and I tossed it in. And Now, here's the crazy part of it. I go back, I toss it in, and that thing is deader than a mackerel by then. I mean, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. dry, dead. And he's floating on the surface. His dead gum alligator guard comes up and snaps it up and swims off. Love it. You I was addicted ever since. Man. Yeah. It wasn't a big. It was maybe about three feet long, but I didn't even know there. Were, I, I didn't know in the world it was. Right. It, well, it it's was interesting wild. because <laughs> I'll get to my first catch, but the first thing that really got me wanting to fish Hooked, yeah. was an alligator gar. Oh yeah. So my dad, I grew up gar fishing. That was our primary thing we fished for as a kid. And uh, my dad sitting on the side of the road at Cal Bayou, what's called the Swing Bridge, yeah. between Bridge City and Orange there, caught a seven foot two inch alligator. Oh, bar. that's a nice guy. It weighed 196 pounds. I jumped in the bed of the truck, I was scared, but like enamored. <laughs> and I named it Moby because I'd just seen Moby Dick Moby on Dick, cable, yeah. early yeah. cable with Gregory yeah. Peck. Oh, wow, yeah. And um, <laughs> named it Moby. And here's um, now that my father's gone. Uh, God rest his soul, miss him so much. And the statute of limitations has ran out. I can tell you he caught it on a three-pound largemouth bass. <laughs> <laughs> he threw the cast that he was out of bait, and they caught a three-pound bass oh. and put it on hold. Oh, oh wow. And that was that okay. was that was my uh, what, it, what size of hook was that? I mean, I mean we used I mean like, like shark hook it was huge. Well at least that wasn't a croaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would have offended the trout guys, no. but maybe. That uh, makes me think of a story that Mark Davis told me that he aggravated a captain, and I know the captain, so I won't mention the name, but um, the guy adored big trout. Yeah. You know, just put him up on a pedestal. One time, Mark Davis says, you know, Cal, you know what I'd do with a 30-inch trout? And I go, what? Put it under a balloon for a tarpon. <laughs> Oh my God! Getting back to the gar story, yeah. um, that really got me into it. I, I don't remember my first fish, but I remember fishing at the Port of Orange and was told it was a croaker. Yeah, my very first one, because I was like three. Sure. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. And uh, the first two catches that like that were like big memories were about a five-pound black drum on a Zebco 808. Oh um, yeah! Which oh, there fought you go. me hard. And uh, about a five or six pound channel cat in the same, close to the same area where I caused gar. So 
that really got me into fishing. I mean, yes. I remember sitting in my dad's lap, I've talked about before on my radio program, War Outdoors on News Talk 560 KLVI, as well as in a magazine about a scrapbook I had for hunting and right. wildlife. Right. I cut out sports and field and outdoor life and Texas parks and wildlife, but mm-hmm. also the fishing, when I cut out like saltwater sportsmen sure. and, and yeah. pictures. And uh, I, I remember sitting in my dad's lap and doing that and a picture that really inspired me to do something I've never done to this day, but I will do. There was about a 15-foot black marlin they caught in the Pacific and putting it in a boat, and I was like, something wow. like that exists? Yeah. <laughs> so um, that was my white whale was a gar named Moby. So there you go. There you go. Jade Moby? Moby didn't make it. There you go. Yeah, this was before. Look, this is, in the, this is like 1977. Okay. So um, when I was four years old, so um, we catch and release was not in the vernacular <laughs> Of, it wasn't of when I was growing up. Well, we're about the same age. Catching hot grease, baby. And yeah. that agar is great. So, oh, yes. Um, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And um, it's it's ironic that the guy who is probably the most outspoken conservation writer in the state started off his fishing fascination by using a three, my dad using a three-pound bass for bait. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that is something that. else. Yeah, that's that's, cool. that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, wow. you know... Um, I had a, three a, pound a oh my god, legit. whole yeah. three pound bass. What did he hook it through? The nose or the I don't remember, but it was a three pound bass. It's a no-no anyway. He made a harness for it. <laughs> oh my god! Bridled it, <laughs> just like they do for tuna. Bridled it right through the nose. It died a quick death. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, but actually, I had a fish like that. An oh my god, fish like that. Um, and again, it was an alligator guard. And um, same resaca. About four years later. Um, no, it was 1979 actually, it was right after Hurricane Allen, and my dad put me on a canoe. We were on a canoe in the middle of the socket just paddling around, and we were passing what we thought was a big log, and it turned out to be about an eight foot long alligator gar. As we got closer to it, the thing rolled and just dove, and I saw that fish, that that was my oh my gosh fish, you know, I right. mean, and you know, I... It's, a, it's an amazing that how much... Uh, of this has come around Gar at this show. Because yeah. I've had multiple, multiple people come up to the booth yes. and talk about Gar. And I had a guy come up, I had written about a Gar. The, the, if you lived on the upper Texas coast, Houston area, maybe even in Texas, a big destination to the 60s to the early 90s was Sierrama in Galveston. Yeah. It was a marine park. Oh, yeah. And my favorite fish there was a giant alligator Gar. I, and I wrote about this. Uh, what happened was, uh, in the 90s, after it closed, I was at the Aquarium of the Americas in New Orleans doing uh, okay. some, some, some photography. At the I've aquarium. been there before. Yeah. yeah. And I see, me and my wife, Lisa, are there, and I see this gar. And I just tell her offhand, it looks like the gar used to have at Sierrama. And the worker next to me goes, that is the gar that used to be at Sierrama. Oh, wow. Wow. That's so, cool. fast forward 11, 12 years, uh-huh. we're at the Mandalay Bay Aquarium. In Vegas. In Las Vegas. And yeah. I told Lisa, I said, I can't believe it. I think I'm, I think it's the same gar. <laughs> found oh my the manager. Goodness. It was the same gar. It traveled. That is a worldly it li- fish. It lived from Sierrama. They moved it, and then the next year I went back for business, and it was it was in it was like in treatment. It had been hurt or yeah. something or sick. It was really old. I heard it had been in captivity since the 30s, and one of the guys here, I think it's one of the Galveston Charter guys knew about that gar and told me he knew somebody who worked there and his name was Igor. Igor the so, gar. But people are or asking is it about Igor, the Igor. Young Frankenstein fan. Is it Definitely Igor? not an Igor. It Only if he has something to do with the eye. It was the old it was the <laughs> yeah, it was the old school. Yeah. But once again powerful memories, you know. Yeah. And oh you can gosh. make these memories come true by taking the kid out there fishing and yeah. uh, you heard bluegill a lot here or croaker yes. from my Croaker, fish. bluegill, sheep's head, all these, you know, these are, you know, and ironically, a lot of the fish that are mentioned by a lot of these anglers about their nascent experiences involves what other people would call trash fish. Exactly. Right. You know? So or, I'm, or I'm smaller a, fish. I'm, yeah. a, I'm at a lodge in Louisiana about five years ago, and um, there was an opportunity to flounder fish. Yeah. And I say, uh, dude, I'm definitely going to do the flounder thing this morning. And I said, plus, everything's a trash fish but a flounder and a crappie. <laughs> I'm there serious about. And um, dude hollers out. A guy goes, hell no. 
alligator guy in the trash for your sheep. There you go. You told that story to a yep. reader. This, this yeah, story. <laughs> so once again, just, it's, you know, the spirit of it's fun. Yeah. And being able to, please don't take your kid fishing for the first time, Carolina rigging for bass. Or, or you know, or topwater fishing for trout. Yeah, I mean, how you horrible know, would that be? It, I've seen it happen. Um, I've shared this story with you, actually, Chester. One time, my wife and I went out fishing for sheep's head. It was actually this time of year. Yeah. And we um, caught our limits of sheep's head and beautiful fish, three to five pounds each with one that went eight. And um, we stopped at White Sands Marina to clean to fillet the fish. At the same time I was filleting the fish, this boat comes in with this man, his buddy, and his eight-year-old son. And they had been fishing all morning long, throwing top waters for speckled trout. They caught one trout. One and trout. One trout. And they had the kid out there with a spinning rod and reel trying to learn how to throw top water. Ugh. You know, and you could tell the kid had had about as much fun as he has in the dentist's chair. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Getting he, braces or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and he yeah. comes over and he's just staring down at my cooler full of sheep's head. Now, which yeah. do you think he would rather have done? The you, cooler we've full. We've talked yeah. about this before. And the thing, yeah. I don't know if it was in the last show we all three did. I, I think but, it was, actually. But, dude, I mean, the thing, like, one of my favorite things to do for easy wins is bluegill fishing with my son. Oh, yes. Yeah. We have a little regional park that's at uh, is in northwest Austin that basically we just go down to. It used to be a holding pond for Texas Parks and Wildlife, yeah. so there's a lot of cool stuff down there. And it's a good carp lake. It's a good uh, catfish lake. It's a decent bass lake. And there are a lot of little bass in there. But we caught our, he, he caught his first bass down, down there, just a little one for with, yeah. the, with, a, with an earthworm. We mainly go down there and catch bluegill. Now, I take him bass fishing off the bank in that little park. Yeah. And there, but we, we don't catch a whole lot because we're throwing artificials, but I'm teaching him how to cast. My yeah. whole point is, though, if you want an easy win with your kids, sheep's head, bluegill, you know, any of that stuff. Yeah, is, and, and kids... Children, little children, are all about the easy win. They need a win. I, I believe very strongly. Sooner or later, a kid learns has to learn. You don't always succeed, right, even when you right. put in your best yeah, effort. Yeah. But there, you don't have to teach them that from the very beginning. And you can almost always succeed yeah. unless it's really cold outside yeah. on the bank with a bluegill. Or you yeah, know, you can't go wrong that way. No. You know, and you want them to want to come back and fish some more. That kid that that went top water fishing with his dad on a really tough day. Do you think he's going to want to go the next time? No. No, definitely not. I, no. You know, I mean, yeah, I'd like rather... Tr- I'm a hunting into things. Yeah. It's like, dude, take them on a like a really easy duck hunt. Or yeah. A or, a hunt. Hunt. or a squirrel hunt. A squirrel hunt. hunt. You know how my first hunt was rabbit hunt with a headlight at night, right. which is There legal. you go. Um, even though I'm from East Texas, and I had to, I had to make sure to separate legality and spotlight. <laughs> yes. We never spotlighted deer. Right. Yeah. I promise. That was a no-no in my family. But uh, I spotlighted rabbit at night. When I shot that rabbit, you'd have thought I was Peter Capstick in the long grass of <laughs> There Africa. you go. That's great. With, with, That's with awesome. A lion. Great I, I reference. I came home and posed for a picture with that. It was death in the long grass, baby. <laughs> And That's I was like, great. but it's it's the memories that are forged, and you know, it's yes. I am, and I'm not just saying that. I am one of the most grateful human beings I've ever met in my life. I am. I, I literally thank God every day for specific points about different things, especially like access to what I get to do. But yes. even in that, working in this profession, just getting the, the blessings we have in America, no for kidding. fishing and hunting, it's easy to take things for granted. And I want to see the stuff like I saw it when I was a kid. That's how I want to see. I, I want to see it like that too. I want to see the pure end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The 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 innocent end of it in a way too, as far as the you know. Yeah. The way that goes. You know, I I, I, I do be, I do not begrudge how f- a lot of anglers fish. You know, yeah. you if you want to be a fly fisherman, God bless you. Be a sure. fly fisherman. Sure. If you want to fish exclusively with um, top waters, God bless you. You go yeah. for it, man. Knock yourself out. But um, you know, there is something to be said about the angler in the faded cutaway shorts, yep. the old beat up um, Converse short, um, sneakers, yep. and a short sleeve um, Dallas Cowboy t-shirt yep. sitting on the side of a bank throwing ch- uh, chicken livers for catfish. That, you know, yep. There's something to be said about that. Yep. Cal, Chester and I talk about this all the time. What we do at Texas Fishing Game and everybody that's listening to this, it's accessibility. Yes. It's making yes, it definitely. doable for the working man. It's making it doable for people that don't have a ton of money and can't afford a boat in some cases. Chester and I are both bank fishermen and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and just it's about making it for everyone. I yeah. mean, that's what the magazine's always been about. It's the working man's magazine. Take a look at our photo section. Right. 
Take a look at yeah. all the different fish that have been caught. Good point. And what they're wearing. You know? yeah. We have had pictures of children holding a hardhead catfish because it was their first fish. Absolutely. You know, we have had pictures of of people holding a stringer full of bluegills. Yep. Right. You know, um, it isn't it isn't just about catching trophy fish. It's about being out there in the outdoors with your family, with your friends, with your loved ones, and like Chester and I have said before, I mean sharing the gifts that the good Lord has given us. Right. right. You yep. know, because honestly, we're not going to be here for very long, yep. and you can't take it with you in there. Yep. You got to pass it on. You know, so you've got to pass it on, on, and you've got to enjoy what you've got when you've got it. Exactly. You know, but Jesus is coming back on a horse. I know there are animals in heaven. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's got to be flounder too. No, I believe flounder. So, so. Yeah. And alligator gar. Yeah, and alligator gar. <laughs> and a mangrove snapper. <laughs> and a redfish. And a, red. and a carp. And carp. Oh, God made the carp. Yeah, exactly. God made the carp, ladies and gentlemen. God made the hardhead catfish, too. There's one company here, and I'm not going to get too company specific, but they, they make, yeah. they make a, a spray that Chester and I saw yesterday called Cooler Fresh. It's basically a spray that basically biodegradably or bi- biology, biologically cleans up, the cooler. cleans up the cooler and makes it smell fresh and basically fights. It's an enzyme based formula, right? Yeah. The thing is, they had uh, some clip art on their their cooler full of fish was carp. There you go. They didn't even know really? what they were. And really? Were, and I said, "Why do you have it? That's a perfect. Uh, that's a perfect wow. imagery yeah. of something that stinks bad when it's when yeah. it gets old. Oh, <laughs> carp, <laughs> carp, gar, hardheads, gaff top. I mean, skipjack. You know. Oh, that <laughs> might be the one. Chad. <laughs> That'll but make some I, serious I, funk. They, they were kind of like, you know, but they're a new product. They're trying to get uh, picked up in, uh, in the stores and stuff now. But I kind of thought that was kind of cool. That's one of the things I just wanted to mention that I saw on the show that was no, unique. That's, that, that's because great. I, yeah, that's I, really cool. Have, have y'all ever had the situation where you have a mildewy cooler because it's set out the, too long? Yeah. Dude, I have left Menhaden in my cooler for three oh, days oh, in August oh, and forgot oh, about it. Oh, oh, oh. So let's not talk about smell. Menhaden. I can top that. Pokey. Uh-oh. I can top that. Oh, Try no. cast netting ready for to mullet, this. putting them in a cooler, telling someone to take them out of the cooler and freeze oh, them, no. and them not doing it, and then you for come back, long? wait, like I'm every listening. good Mexican story, wait. <laughs> <laughs> then you come back from iCast, and you see your cooler, and the top of the cooler is slightly <laughs> cracked. <laughs> because it's bowed out. <laughs> and there are maggots yeah. just making a nice line <laughs> straight up the side of the cooler. Gross. I didn't even open that thing. I just sealed it shut, put it in the back of my truck, took it to the landfill, and left it there. <laughs> as far as I know, was it, it is an still there. Cooler? Huh? Was it like an extreme cooler? Like one of It was a Coleman. Things? Okay, all right. It so was a cold. It wasn't one. super duper expensive. No. But it was still your cooler. Yeah. And you gave the guy instructions, and, you know, there yeah. you go. <laughs> and that was my son. <laughs> That's my boy. Instructions. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're listening out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we Calito, gotcha. Yeah, we gotcha. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Love. And it was one of those really hot Julys that we had a few years ago <laughs> where it was like 108. Yeah, it's just stuff started growing oh, in there, Oh, God. Man. Which, I mean, I'm uh, sure that, oh, I, I'm sure it was mullet. something out of a John Carpenter that's, movie. That's another <laughs> funny fish. No, man, that was a fu- I didn't even want to look. I just was not going to look. No, uh-uh. <laughs> I could smell it from here. That's all I need to know. Yeah. You know, the cats were coming up to me because there's something wrong with your cooler, man. I can smell it back in time from the podcast. <laughs> well, and, 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 Dude. And, it was a smell you could taste. Yeah. And speaking of that, these guys did the, the, did the demonstration with the cooler stuff. Is they sprayed chum on a on a on a on a uh, like a paper towel. You yeah. smelled it. They sprayed this stuff on top of it and like you know, knocked it out. It knocked it out. That's it cool. Real, yeah, I just kind of thought it was something. I would like to see what it would have done to that cooler. <laughs> Yeah, that, that yeah, would have been, been interesting. I'm sure the spray would have stopped in midair and said, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we did no. not sign up for this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, what is uh, the most embarrassing thing or craziest thing that ever happened to you guys oh. while you're fishing? You gotta uh, pre- you gotta preview us with these we, questions. Oh yeah. my! No, you don't. Have true journalism. They pop the oh. fuck. So here's the deal, Dustin. You've already kind of hit us with yours, man. Right? Yeah, you right. hit your dad. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's uh. That was embarrassing, by the way. Oh uh, sure. And he laughs at it today. Well, today, yeah. but probably wasn't so. No, funny. it was not funny. Then. All right, you two, then, since I've given mine. All right, I'll share mine. Oh boy. It involves my eternal beloved Sandy. Um, you realize she's a Yankee. 
Yeah. She's a Michigander. Oh, um, I didn't know that. That's cool. When um, we were engaged, she came down to meet my family, stay a week during the holidays. And one of the things I decided to do, we're going to go fishing. <laughs> and so um, I took her on one of those little party boats yeah. um, that um, goes around the bay and you catch sand trout and you catch whitey and you catch croaker, whatever's biting. Right. And so we're fishing and um, the trout, the, the sand trout were really biting. Yeah. And this, let me preface this, this is not as embarrassing as it is humbling. Um, yeah, so you. we're fishing. And she catches a nice sand trout. And so I hand her my rod and I start taking the trout off of her hook. And as I'm doing that, she gets a bite on my rod. So I reach over to grab my rod. She goes, ah, it's my rod. It's my fish. And she reels it in. And so I drop the other, put the other one on the stringer, take that one, cast hers out. Take, I'm taking the fish off my hook, which is now her hook. And as I'm taking the fish off mine, she hooks a third trout God, in the space of about 30 seconds. 30 seconds yeah, Reels sure. that one in. I cast mine out. And she turns, honey, will you take this one off? And I just look at her. And she smiles at me, that smile. You've seen her smile. So I take this. And as I'm taking off this third trout, she hooks a fourth trout. I let her take that one off the hook. She's catching all the fish, and yeah. you're doing all the work. Yeah, pretty much. I started figuring out how our relationship was being, being defined. <laughs> you you right. teach people how to treat you, right? Isn't that true? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. No, but I love my wife. She's the greatest thing I in my know. life, man. She's held me together these last three years. You know, but I, I love fishing with her, you know. That's great. But that's one of my favorite fishing memories right there. It's a little embarrassing. It's very humbling. But it also told me she's a keeper. No, oh, there you go. Cute. Good stuff, man. Jasper, yeah. what about you? Well, me and my wife and my dad were out at the Sabine Jetties, um, and we were doing a uh, photo shoot. Like every fishing trip of mine turns into a photo shoot at some point because yes. I'm in the outdoors business. Right. So I'm trying to get you know store, uh, content, baby. Content. content. It's a ticket. And um, we had caught some stingrays and stuff, and I, I was going to. Uh, uh, I needed a shot of me uh, b- gaffing one to bring it to the okay. boat. The story was about I was working on was about that you know stingray can be pretty good to eat. So I was going to show the yeah, gaff they or are. something like that. And um, and then I had a picture of Lisa uh, fight. I was photographing her fight hers, and I got like up top on the boat and shooting down. You know what I mean? Get all that cool stuff. Well, I uh, gaffed, regaffed it after I brought it in the boat, put it back down the water for the shot, right? And my dad said, I think, I don't know if you did that real well. Oh, it'll be all right. So I get ready, and I, and I, and I heave hole, and I ripped right through the stingray. Oh, and, no, no. Up, and we lost the rest of the photo. Oh, oh, my gosh. Same area. I'm filming with uh, Lou Marillo for a DVD that we did right. uh, back in the mid-2000s, early, early 2000s. And it was released, Hunting and Fishing DVD around the world. And um, we were at the Sabine Jetties again. That was on the channel side and on the Gulf side now. And um, I had a big rod rigged with like 150 pound braid. Oh boy. And they were, I, mean, I remember him looking at this thing and he goes, is that a little overkill for what's going on? <laughs> and I'm going, I don't know, man. And I remember putting it in the rod holder and I'm thinking that morning we had fished and we were getting sharks short strike us. A oh bit. boy. They come and just grab it and let it go. Yeah. And I was like, I think that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, if, if a shark picks it up, I'm just going to make him get mad at it. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to tighten the drag up just a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. make them hook themselves. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have the part of me picking it up. And, and right. So we did this and I, I put it down, I tightened up and said, I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. True story. The thing bends, doubles completely. Oh, over, no. And it, the fish, whatever it was, was, I think it was a, probably a 300 pound ray or something broke the rod holder out oh, of oh, off my friend's oh my uh, fiberglass and took that and put a <laughs> hole in his boat oh, oh my no. and you lost your rod and i lost a 300 dollars 400 dollar rod Jeez. Oh, I lost my dad's $300 rod. Oh, uh, no. That was his big stick. And then another one, because I have many. Um, I I was I've got Ven- a few. I was in Venice, Louisiana with Mark Davis, Big Water Adventures. Good old Mark. And I forget the guide's name now, but we were down in one of those lodges, and we we went to go catch redfish, but it was um, shark migration period in October where they're all migrating down the coast. And we were sight casting the five and six foot black tip. Oh boy. It was incredible. You know, I had about a five and a half, six foot black tip. And Mark has a technique for getting it out of the water and we got him yeah. out of the water, I'm handling it. 
and the shark flops as I'm doing the uh, commentary, <laughs> and it bites a hunk out of the guide's console. Oh, <laughs> no. oh no! And that no. footage is out there on. I so- should not be laughing. My at this, gosh, but this is Chester, good. you are a destructive man when you <laughs> yeah. fish with people. So there you go. That's Chester's embarrassing. Yeah. That moment's on YouTube I, somewhere. So. I've got one actually. That's one that I still have you not know, yet to live down. Um, I was fishing with um, one of my good friends, Marina Alvarado, um, and he had caught a trout, and his then fiance took a picture of him holding up the trout, um, and I was in the picture. Right. And later on, he's showing off the picture to his students in class and to his principal, Dr. Delorme, and. He goes, yeah, yeah, and that's 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 my good friend right there, Gonzalez. And Dr. Delorme goes, what is he doing? And everybody takes a look at the picture. And I am in the background with my back to him because I'm standing off the gunnel blessing the water in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'll- and it was shown to... That's a great. principal in my school district. Oh my God. And on that note, we better head back to the Texas Fishing Game boots. Get a little bit, a little bit longer. No, yeah. That's good. I really appreciate you guys joining. Um, real quick, before we summaries the things y'all saw at the show that you liked, real quick before we end. You go first. I didn't see a lot yet because I've been at the booth. I know. I've been that at the booth. collapsible hat. Okay, the pop yeah, hat. Yeah, the collapsible right. hat was great. I did see oh, the I love that. hat. It's awesome. Um, David, who started that whole thing, came by the booth today and uh, it, it's just, it's an, it, it could fit in your pocket. And it folds out to a nice long, nice big, hat. Yeah, nice sun big, hat. Big sun hat, exactly. Yeah. So that's that's something I noticed. I really like that hat. The company Mang. Yeah, M A N G. Yeah. yeah, that are doing. Uh, if you buy one of their shirts, it's really cool. They got or like, any product. Yeah, any they product. Said, they yeah. plant a mangrove. Oh yes, that's true. That's, that's right. another right great one. Us, so we've got yeah. to learn more about. Very it. conservation oriented. They got really oriented. cool looking shirts. Great artwork. They got like a manatee. They've got um, turtles, sea turtles. They've got uh, redfish over there. Snook, permit. Yeah. But um, I thought it was great looking clothes. They got, you know, the SPF protection and stuff. Yeah. But the fact that their commerce is directly doing conservation was a, was a big deal. Yeah. You know, we had a manatee yeah. in Port Mansfield. Really? Yeah, we had a manatee in Port Mansfield. I was fishing with Danny New one time. Um, and afterwards, he's washing down his boat, and we hear something slurping. Yeah. And we're looking around, what in the world is that? We look out the back of the boat, and there is a manatee there s- drinking the water as it's flowing off of the boat. Getting fresh water. Yeah, so we start feeding it fresh water. <laughs> Within a week, Texas Parks and Wildlife had put a no wake manatee zone sign in the middle of the bay of the harbor. I've seen that sign. Yeah. Now that dead gum manatee water. is not there anymore. I think he moved back to Florida. He was a winter Texan. <laughs> but they still have the buoy. <laughs> well he might come back. We gotta protect you. You never know. Right. You gotta protect it. It's got his own Texas area. Yeah. I don't know. He might be afraid of the drug violence too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's this show is degenerated. We we're sorry we have painted your show. Oh, it's yeah. fine. Y'all hijack it every time but I hey, why not? <laughs> it's not it's not that big of a deal because you guys are fun to have on. Yeah. We we need to start doing this on a regular basis. Yeah, there you go. I just love seeing y'all in person. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah, it's a great us. show. Thank you, Dustin. Thanks, buddy.